Let me try to draw this diagram to show the medial pterygoid plate with the pterygoid hamulus. This is on one side and this is on the other side as if we are looking at the medial pterygoid plate from behind. And so anteriorly is the nasal septum. This is the vomer and that will be the palate. And then below that, the tongue. We are looking from behind forward. Now, let me draw the first muscle. And this muscle is fleshy at this location where it's attached to the base of the skull. And then it reaches the pterygoid hamulus. It will become narrower and then the flesh will give rise to an aponeurosis. An aponeurosis means wide flat tendon. So this is this muscle when it contracts like this, it will cause tension of the aponeurosis and it is changing its direction because of the presence of the pterygoid hamulus, which acts like a pulley. And so it is the tensor villi palatini muscle. Of course, this is the muscle on the other side and it will change its direction at this location. And so we have now the soft palate at, or let's say the skeleton of the soft palate behind the hard palate. Now the other muscle that we have at connected to the palate from above is a muscle that comes again from the base of the skull, but goes medially and downwards. And it's all fleshy. And this is the levator villi palatini muscle. It can only act if the palate is tense. So usually the levator and the tensor villi palatini, they act together. And upwards, they, at the base of the skull at this location is the opening of the auditory tube. You can see this is the nose. And so behind the nose is the nasopharynx where the auditory tube opens. So now we have levator villi palatini and the tensor villi palatini muscle. There are some muscle fibers here connected, or these constitute what we call the musculus uvulae. Then from the lower part of the soft palate connected to it, there is another muscle here, and this muscle will go from the palate to the tongue. So it is palatoglossus muscle. And then there is another muscle that goes down from the soft palate to the pharynx and more posterior. So this is the palatopharyngeus muscle. At this location is the tonsillar fossa and the palatine tonsil is located in between them. These muscles, they are all supplied by the vagus nerve, except this muscle, the tensor villi palatini, which is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal uh, nerve. The location of the uvula, in fact, should be always in the middle. We can use the location of the uvula to test the integrity of the vagus nerve. So you tell the patient to open the mouth and say, ah. So in that case, the soft palate should be elevated. If this vagus nerve here is involved on this side, let's say it is, there is a problem with the vagus nerve on this side. Therefore, only this muscle is going to act and therefore the uvula is going to deviate to the contralateral site and this can be used to test the integrity of the vagus nerve to show you these muscles this muscle is the palatoglossus obviously it is attached to the tongue here is the tongue and this is the fold of course it, i'm i'm not looking at the muscle at the moment but i'm looking at the mucous membrane that covers the muscle fibers and then posterior to it is the palatopharyngeus muscle. And in between them is the fossa, the tonsillar fossa, which contains the tonsil or the palatine tonsil. Superiorly, if we go back to this diagram, and if we have a mid, a mid sagittal section of the head, and you are looking from the side, if you look at the muscles above the palate, then the muscle fibers that are slanting downwards and medially, they are the levator villi palatini muscle. While the muscle fibers that are present in the background and are vertical, they are the tensor villi palatini muscle. So here, for example, you can see some muscle fibers slanting medially and attached to the soft palate. This should be the levator villi palatini muscle. Now, let me show you another example. 
um, they have removed all the mucous membrane from this location. Look, we are above the soft palate. This is the soft palate. So we have these muscle fibers slanting medially, levator villi palatini muscle, while those muscle fibers that are located in the background, in other words, more laterally, they are the tensor villi palatini muscle. They are tensor, although they are not here, they are not shown to be related to the palate, but in fact, they are going to change their direction and they are going to form the aponeurosis of the soft palate. So the aponeurosis here is the tendon of this muscle. And then it is covered by mucous membrane. It has like salivary glands. Other muscles are connected to it from below. Uh, musculus uvulae is uh, connected to it here. That's why it is thick. So it's not because it is aponeurotic, it is thick, but the aponeurosis constitutes the skeleton of this soft palate. So that's how you differentiate between tensor villi palatini muscle and levator villi palatini. The slanting muscle fibers are the levator villi palatini muscle. If you look at them from behind, both of them, they will constitute like the letter V, while the tensor villi palatini muscle will constitute the letter L, something like that. The, the pull of this muscle will cause tension here, and the pull of this muscle will cause elevation of the tensed palate, soft palate, of course, not the hard palate.